Hello there, welcome to Full Record Jacket with Phil and Ben, except it's only a half full jacket on this particular edition because I have no Ben. Don't worry, he's not unwell or anything. It's not like back last summer where I had to do some solo shows because Ben wasn't uh, feeling at all good, but uh, he's fine. We're going to be recording some shows very soon, but I've come on solo because I need to make a, a confession and I think that Ben would laugh at me if I did this on the normal show. So I thought I'd come and do a separate video to tell you all about this. Um, where do I start with this? Um, I think I might be becoming, I, I don't know, how, how do I say this? I think I might be becoming, um, I might be becoming a Swifty. Look, even even Taylor's laughing at this. Um, I need to explain myself, don't I? I need to explain how all this started. Well, the thing is, you see, I'd I'd heard of Taylor Swift. We've all heard of Taylor Swift, um, and I I've known for years, you know, that she exists, uh, but I'd never sort of really listened to any of her music. And the thing is, over the last sort of decade or so, so I haven't really paid a massive amount of attention to the pop charts. I hear the odd well-known pop record, you know, when it when it does well. You know, I've heard of things, you know, I've heard Harry Styles hits and I've heard things by The Weeknd and Dua Lipa and some of these people. But I must admit, I hadn't really consciously known many songs by Taylor Swift. I knew she'd become a big star. I knew she'd started in country. Uh, sort of country pop and then gone more pop and then she was now doing concerts with dancers and spangly outfits and all the all the pop stuff and I knew of course that she'd become really really successful but I must admit I sort of at one point had thought well maybe I should listen to some of her stuff just to see what it's like and then I never really got around to doing it and then I was talking to someone who was telling me about their daughter being a fan and having had been a fan since being a teenager and grown into her twenties and was still a big fan. And then I read some other things about, about this. Um, so I thought I must, I must investigate because her albums were getting good reviews from critics. Now, obviously some of these critics nowadays are obviously much younger than me. So maybe that doesn't mean anything, but I thought I must investigate. And I did have a little bit of a listen to, some of the Midnight's album, which is the most recent one, I think. And it was okay, but I must admit, it didn't really grab me and I wasn't that interested at the time. And then I forgot about Taylor Swift again. And then I, then sometime uh, just before last Christmas, I decided again, I was going to give it a go. Not quite sure what prompted it. I think it was the fact that she'd had this concert film out and I was reading about this concert film on this current tour and how um, successful this current tour is, because it's apparently the most uh, high grossing concert tour ever staged. So I thought, well, this is, you know, history being made now. She, she you know, she was a, a teen sensation, but then she's had her career going for over well over a decade and she's still got hugely loyal fans. So I need to, I need to dig in more. So I have listened a bit more and well, listening to the first album, which is basically a country style pop album that she did when she was, I think, 17. I mean, it's an extraordinary story. I have, I've watched, I've now listened to some of the albums and I've now watched uh, some documentaries about her as well. And it really is quite an extraordinary story. She got a job uh, in Nashville, an after school job when she was at high school, age 14, as a professional songwriter. She co wrote songs with a more experienced woman from the age of 14 and ended up making her debut album at the age of, I think, 17. And right away, you can tell why she was popular with young girls because the album is just, uh, you know, it, it's the authentic voice of a 17 year old girl and there's songs on there about you know not you know dissing your ex-boyfriend that she's fallen out with and writing a song about how she's in love with the boy 
at school, but he thinks that he's just a friend, but she's got this crush on him and all this. It's it's really well done. And she has got um, clearly a real knack for writing songs. And you know, the next album, the title song, Fearless, this is like a you know country, very commercial country song, but it's very catchy. And after a while, uh, having heard some of these songs a few times, I've also dipped into the 1989 album, which was the big breakout pop album that, that she did. Um, I was interested in this because Ryan Adams, the singer-songwriter, did a cover of that album. I mean, he's covered a few albums in full now. He's done albums by Springsteen and Dylan that he's covered in full, and he's done a, a Taylor Swift album. I thought this is kind of bizarre. You know, a guy who's into Bob Dylan and, and Neil Young and Bruce Springsteen is now covering a Taylor Swift album. I've got to find out more about this. So I had to listen to this 1989 album, and it does start to get under your skin you start to to get to know the tunes and you know the music is not something that i might necessarily come back to that often but i do now really admire her abilities i mean this you know she has definitely got quite a rare talent and it's also very impressive the way that she's handled her career i mean she's maintained a really sort of dignified approach to it she hasn't pushed to be controversial she's just built this relationship with her fans and she does seem very genuine about caring about the fans and wanting to give them a good experience whilst also taking a bit of their money as well but uh but yeah i mean it's just a phenomenon i mean and she seems to be becoming even more of a phenomenon now she's what 34 years old she's been around now for you know I mean, it's getting on for soon. It'll be 20 years that she'll have been making records. I think the first album came out in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. So it won't be long before they'll be celebrating 20 years of Taylor Swift. And her star seems to, if anything, still be rising. I've just read that she's performed a concert in Melbourne for a record-breaking crowd there, 96,000 people, the biggest uh, concert that she's done so far, and that must be one of the biggest uh, stadium concerts that's ever been staged in Australia, I would have thought. So interesting. I'm going to be sort of interested to hear what this latest album is like. I don't know all the songs or all the albums yet. I'm still sort of exploring the catalogue a little bit. I have it on in my car sometimes, whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm afraid, folks, this is the reality. I may be becoming a bit of a Swifty. YouTube, of course, is partly responsible for this because when you watch a video on YouTube, and I have watched a few Taylor videos, you know, she she doesn't offend my eyes, I have to say. So it keeps then recommending them to you, doesn't it? You know, you watch one video of one artist and then, Next time you turn it on, it's recommending another one, and the, you watch that, and then it thinks you're thinks you're a super fan, and then it starts recommending even more. So I don't know how this is going to stop, um, and I don't know what Ben's going to have to say about this. I mean, Ben's already heard a little bit about this, but I don't know whether he realizes how far all this has gone. So this is it. Um, that was my confession. Phil's version that I may be becoming a bit of a Swifty. What are your views on this? Can I be redeemed in any way? Can I be forgiven for this? Have I completely blown all of my rock and roll and indie credibility totally now? Can I can I never show my face on this channel again? You're going to have to let me know, folks. In the meantime, bye for now. <laughs>